Okay, now on to WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania 21, a.k.a. WrestleMania yes. Goes Hollywood, as it was called. John Cena versus uh, JBL. At the, and most... at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. Yes. Have you ever been? I've never been to California, no. No, the Staples Center is right next to where the... Uh, they hold E3. I have a oh, okay. I, I have a I have a Staples office supply store a few minutes drive from my house, if that counts. <laughs> Almost. Uh, let's see. Yes. Sponsored in by the 2005 S Royal Rumble, John Cena and Batista were the final two competitors, and in a controversial finish, Cena and Batista went over the top rope at the same time, ending in a tie. Mr. McMahon appeared and reset the match under sudden death rules, and Batista would eliminate John Cena and win the Royal Rumble. Fun fact, so it's, and likely so it's known. like it's like it's like a double ring out or something, basically. Yeah, uh, this was a double botch. Oh, that was not supposed to happen that way. No, John Cena was supposed to fall out as the last competitor against Batista, but he like he got his feet caught up in Batista, and Batista. Like the the push, he put too much of his own weight into it, so he went over and he the ended side. up pulling himself out of the ring as well. Oh, so that was I, I did not know that was unintentional. That's interesting. Yeah, it was a botch on both their parts. And when Mr. McMahon comes out screaming, he is legitimately pissed. He was at, so that was like he was actually upset. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, "How the fuck are we supposed to sell this to people? What is going on?" Was was that the one where he he over gorilla walked and injured himself entering the ring? You know, it might be. God. I'm trying to think about it. I don't really know. I don't think it was. No? Damn. Although, it could be. I don't think so, though. I, I love that one. Though. Th no, that, that's that, my favorite that was... bit ever. Okay. Uh, the next month, Cena earns a spot in SmackDown Brands WrestleMania 21 main event, challenging the WWE champion, John Bradshaw Layfield, JBL, okay. and would go on to lose his custom spinner U.S. championship. Oh, no! Which, which JBL proceeded to destroy to signify the end of the Doctor of Thugonomics. Theodore Long, or Teddy Long, decreed a stipulation saying that neither John Cena nor JBL could attack each other before WrestleMania 21. Cena, unable to attack JBL, took frustrations out on his limo, which got him arrested. And JBL would deliver a low blow to Cena. So, you know... Vandalize somebody's limo and then just get punched in the groin, and it's you know it's all even in, in uh, WWE world. Okay. All right. Let's see. I I, I had not realized I had not realized John Layfield was built as six foot six. Yeah. I'd forgotten yep. how big he was. Two hundred ninety pounds. John Bradshaw Layfield. Yeah, and his, his whole. So his he's... His gimmick was that he was like the sort of like rich asshole investor guy, right? Yeah, which is he a gimmick is a financial slightly taken real from life. real life. Yeah, he's an actual real life, uh, like financial. Yeah, he appears on Fox guy. News's um, money ma money talks, I think. So, yeah, something Before. like that. Some yeah, some yeah. business news show. Before he became a full time WWE star. That's an interesting career path. Huh? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. I guess, I don't I guess he must have really, really liked wrestling if he, because presumably he could have just lived comfortably off being, you know, a financial guru. Yeah, I imagine the same thing. Like, for most people who are wealthy enough to just not do anything, Yeah. to continue to do wrestling just probably means that you have a... He must have had a real genuine love for it, I guess. Yeah, and a genuine interest in it. Uh, he is a current WWE commentator. And uh, general manager of NXT, one of the current WWE promotions that is actually doing well. Is is that like was that like one of their like sort of like like developmental? Yeah, things? NXT is absorbed pretty much all of their developmental studios. Oh, okay, so that's like like OVW and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. I see. Uh, they've got a lot of really up and coming talents too. They just did um, their first pay-per-view, NXT TakeOver. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy called Adrian Neville. Mm -hmm. He's currently their champion. Okay. And he's billed as the man that gravity forgot. Is he like really, he's like a high flyer? Yeah, he's, a, he's a high flyer 
very technical performer. Cool. His finisher is the Red Arrow, which is a corkscrew shooting star press. Wow. So he flips into the air, does a corkscrew in addition to the, uh, I think it's a 7, no, 360 flip. Wow. A corkscrew 360 flip and then lands on them. It's really cool. And it always looks like he's just about to hit the floor and nearly hurt himself. But he has yet to do it, so. He prob well, he probably is, like, one wrong move away from badly hurting himself when he's when you're corkscrewing through the air. Yeah, I imagine so. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean well, all sorts of these maneuvers could have all potential for disaster. Yeah. There, there's a reason I was talking about, you know, the disastrous consequences of showing people how to do a stone-cold stunner on YouTube. <laughs> now, now, is Cena still the doctor of thugonomics at this point? Yeah. Okay. He's going to be the doctor of thugonomics until he starts wearing t-shirts. Okay. So it work you'll be able to see the difference. Okay. Now, the theme song for WrestleMania 21 was Big Time by The Soundtrack of Our Lives. Hmm. Interesting. Which is apparently some... a Swedish, often abbreviated as T-S-O-O-L, not to be confused with the American hardcore band T-S-O-L. That's, conf that's very confusing. So. Uh, um. <laughs> uh, I think it froze. Oh, for, for the love of... <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> now, now McMahon's going to come out and yell at us and make us restart this. Restart in sudden death. <laughs> this will be great. In post. You should put that in post. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut cut to him gorilla walking t towards the let's play. <laughs> Just, no, seriously, do it. Oh, god damn it. It hard crash my PS3. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. McMahon says we have to restart the match. Yeah. He was he was not happy with us. No. Not in the slightest. And let's give this another try. As a watcher of current WWE, I have to say the thing I missed most. Is Vince McMahon? Well, I miss a lot of things, but if there's something I could change that wouldn't be too out of the question, it would be to bring back Vince McMahon. Okay. He, he, because he not, Stephanie. Not appearing anymore? No, like he's there at WrestleMania and he's there for all the pay-per-views. But he's not like doing. The and I, ma McMahon I, I imagine he's like watching. Okay. But he doesn't take an active role like he used to. Okay. Like he doesn't play a character. Mr. He's McMahon. He's not the, out there as Mr. McMahon, the evil general manager. Right. His uh, daughter is supposed to take up that reign, but, like, I don't like her. Like, like I liked to hate uh, Vince? Vince McMahon. I just hate Stephanie. And the, it's glaring that she's so, trying to fill so her Stephanie's dad's got shoes. Like, Stephanie's got, like, X-Pac heat from you, then. Uh, yeah, X-Pac heat. Um, well, like, the thing is... It like, I wouldn't mind if she was doing her own thing, but she's very clearly trying to be her dad. Okay. Like when she threatens to fire people, she even tries to do the snarl, like Vince McMahon. Ah, does. okay. Does she do the walk? No. That's, that's she does mock. She does mocking walkouts where she'll walk out to some, to a popular wrestler's music. Okay. Mostly right now, Daniel Bryan's. Uh, but she's, I think she's done it to a couple other peoples. Now, uh, Layfield actually uh, started um, in the uh, Global Wrestling Federation. GFW. Yeah, which was a, sh a uh, short-lived short independent promotion in, uh, in Texas. Yeah. Up in our Texas. I imagine that's where he gets the uh, Texas attitude. Yeah, well, he is Texan. I mean, he actually is Texan. Yeah. Um, it was actually, it actually was shown on ESPN. Huh, really? Yeah, I don't. Maybe this is back when in ESPN's early days when it didn't really have much like much to show. 
Like, I don't know. I, f I just find it interesting because like ESPN's how, like, current HBO take on pro wrestling. Keep, like when HBO started, they had to keep showing Chud over and over again because they didn't have the rights for that many movies. But they had Chud. <laughs> they had Chud. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just find it interesting. Uh, usually ESPN does not really cover pro wrestling except when people die. Mm. Or when CM Punk, you know, does a thing. Why CM Punk? Uh, I'm just referring to the last time ESPN covered oh, okay, okay. Uh, wrestling when they, when, uh, when they thought it was real. It was uh, during CM Punk's 2011 uh, pipe bomb. <laughs> That was the uh, work shoot where he um, uh, threatened to take the WWE title with him when he retired. Oh, okay. When his contract was up. And uh, it was only notable because he said really bad things about Vince McMahon and John Cena and the board of directors and John Laurinaitis. He, he got so bad that they actually cut his mic off. And then he got pissed off and walked out. And then he got suspended. And so ESPN was like, oh my god, they're... this real thing is going on. And they oh. con reached out to him for contact. And he's like, fuck you, why don't you care about wrestling normally? And they're like, oh, CM Punk. You imp. You card. Yes. Okay. So, now who, who are you in this match? I'm John Cena. What are your objectives? to hit an AA on JBL and then win by pinfall. That's it? Yes. Ah, that's a pretty straightforward one this time. Yep. See, I did not see this pay-per-view. Like, I'll have to go back and watch it. But, uh, like, I don't... This seems like one that, even though it's for a title, it doesn't seem all that interesting. Well, I don't know, Brett... John Bradshaw Layfield never really, I mean, he was like, I mean, he was like, you know, I guess a solid, you know, I mean, he was solid enough, but he never really set the wrestling world on fire. Right. Okay. Here we go. So here's an interesting fact about John Cena. His signature, You Can't See Meat, uh, you originated... See, did you say You Can't See Meat? See me, sorry. <laughs> I uh, kind of burped at the same time and managed to keep it down. You Can't See... He's got. He's, it's a new vegan gimmick. He's start. He's he's starting out. He wants to sort of. He wants to. He wants yeah. to. He wants to one up CM Punk's straight edge thing. Yes. But anyways, you can't see about... meat. Actually, uh, the vegan punk. The vegan um, gimmick is, <laughs> and we're done. The vegan gimmick is taken by uh, current champion uh, Daniel Bryan, who used to tout himself as the world's strongest vegan. Well, that was short. Yeah. We, 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 spent more, we spent more time correcting the technical problems of this match than <laughs> I the match. I know. Um, but you're saying the origins of Hurry Wild still relevant before we go on to the next match. What's the origin of You Can't See Me? Uh, when he, when John Cena was picked up for Raw, uh, you know, he was still a, you know, kid from West Newberry, Boston. And, uh, you know, he was actually legitimately into hip-hop. And so his brother and him were watching uh, a 50-cent video. I think it was in the club. Okay. And there's a guy dancing, and he's holding a hand in front of his face, and he's, like, shaking his head back and forth. And, like, uh, John Cena's brother was like, that dance is so stupid. And John Cena was like, when I get big in the WWE, I'm going to do that. <laughs> And, and his brother's like, shut up, no you're not. And so when he went there, obviously he couldn't do that for trademark reasons, so instead he shook his hand in front of his face. <laughs> instead of shaking his head behind his... Hand. Behind his hand. And, uh, yeah. So, so he, created... he talks about it in WWE Countdown. So it was like, like on a dare, almost. Yeah. That's funny. It's funny that a lot of the... Um, Catphrases and gimmicks like start out in weird ways. Oh sure. Like the ones they try don't catch on. Right. And the ones that catch on are like on accident. 
Well, it's unpredictable. Like, I think I told... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, you know, it's, an unpre it's unpredictable. You never know what I'll catch on. Yeah. To say. Like, I told you, um, the excellence of execution to describe Bret Hart was just the thing that this guy kept saying about all sorts of wrestlers. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. I think it was uh, J.R. called all sorts of people the excellence of execution or an excellent executor. Okay. And eventually it just stuck to Bret Hart. And then um, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be was originally used to describe the Hart Foundation, not Bret Hart. Oh, okay. But he was the one who said it, and then people started using it to describe him, and it stuck. So. 